Hey you, I hope you're having a good whatever your time zone is, and I hope you have a good whatever your time zone is. Uh, but enough of the introductions, uh, let us get to the brass tacks of today's topic, where I go over Pride Month and everything that I noticed from the celebration of exclusion that comes from it. But before I get into it, I just want to let you all know that I'm going to be running an experiment. It is going to be off the grid from this channel, and I'm not going to say what it is, but I'm going to run the experiment anyways. And one thing I want to let you know is timestamp this video, or save this video, or remember the date, because I can almost guarantee you that in the future, this experiment is going to explode in my face. Uh, now, however, this is the good part of contingency plans, because I always make those. Uh, but yeah, I can- I, I'm saying, like, save this video, or remember the date, because I can almost guarantee you that this experiment is going to explode in my face. However, that is what I'm expecting. Though, to get into today's topic. Some of the things I'll be talking about here are things like the exclusion of people who disagree. The exclusion of people who are not all in with it. Uh, so they're okay with it, but they don't sidle up with themselves as a part of the LGBT. So that would be someone who is okay with trans people, but they don't like the term cis. And I will also go over the exclusion of people who are quite literally included in the celebration. So that would be people who are gay or lesbian or bi who also get excluded because they disagree with things that the Pride Celebration does. And then, towards the end, I'm going to list the greatest problem with the Pride movement as a whole. And you should also stick by to the end to hear that out, because it is pretty controversial. And, uh, you know what that means for YouTube! Toasty. Oh, uh, also, sorry, forgot to mention this ear earlier, but, uh, due to me doing the experiment, there's not going to be a video tomorrow, and there's also not going to be much editing in this video. I'm going to be doing bare bones uh, editing, so I hope you enjoy listening to my voice talk about this issue, because there's not really going to be much editing. I apologize, but I'm busy, okay? I hope you understand with that. Though, to get into it, exclusion of people who disagree. What is it? Well, something that the Pride community, not all, I want that to be noticed, but a loud enough portion of it seem to have the opposite red pill effect. That being, if you're not for it, then you're against it completely, and then you'll be labeled as a phobic of some sort. It is much like the red pill community in that if you disagree in any way with anyone who is in it, then you're a blue pill beta cuck. All of those words in that exact phrasing. But what does that create for your community? Well, for reference, I would look at the red pill. And this isn't meant to be me just trashing on red pill or anything like that, even though I have my disagreements with it on the whole. But, like I said, look at the red pill community. Their whole movement is a shadow of its former self, and also look at what they did. Sure, there were some bad people involved in it, which did end its growth on a whole quicker, but for the most part, it was a it was a whole action of being exclusive without providing proof that, to me, ended it much quicker. For example, an exclusive restaurant where you have to make a certain amount to even eat there, and you also have to wear fancy clothing. If that exclusive restaurant didn't deliver in its food, then it would shut down really quickly. And what did Red Pill become exclusive for? Things like men and women. And that's it. That is how it started. Or at least to me, that is how it started. And then it did what the LG community did, and it started growing into LGB. And Red Pill did the same. It went started as telling the truth for men and women, and then grew into truth for men, women, and dating. And this is where you saw more of the boom in the community. It is where you got people like Fresh and Fit. 
And then said people started using women for their shows and marketed as dating advice or just dating in general. This is also just about the time when the red pill started being exclusive for men. It is where men are allowed to sh** on women for being weird and saying things like, uh, most noted with the whole, my man has to make 100k a year type spiel. This is also where the implosion into many multifacets of the red pill happened. Cause a lot of the men hated that other men a part of the red pill were sh** on women, which then started the trans-like movement where it split into two different things, and then we had red pill and blue pill. Now, pride had a different type of growth, but it is very similar in the way the more it has become like an exclusive joint, the more that the opposites disagree and the more it divides. And like such, it is no longer LGBT and it is also no longer men, women, dating and blue pill. It is now men, women, dating, blue pill, sigma, alpha, beta, omega, delta, top G, which I know is a person, but I've still seen top G be thrown around to describe someone other than the top G. And so on and so forth. The red pill movement has divided and divided and divided over and over again to where I don't even know the newfangled terms they use. And likewise, it is no longer the LGBT, but now it is the LGBTQIA+. It has divided over and over and over again. And so, where does this leave us? Well, the once exclusive restaurant has now become so exclusive that not even the people who could at once enjoy eating there are even allowed in. It's so exclusive now that even the people who once enjoyed eating there are now also shitting on the restaurant along with everyone else who couldn't even eat there once. And then you've got the people who can be in the restaurant just calling every hater a broke dusty loser. Sound familiar? It's just the blue pill beta cuck just in a different form. Or as I say, potato tomato. Which is also to say same sh different pile. So to bring this back to the exclusion of people who disagree, what has that all done? It has just divided the community to where even the starting point disagrees with the whole movement, uh, that being the LNG. So to bring this back to the exclusion of people who disagree, what has that all done? It has just divided the community to where even the starting point, that being the LNG, disagrees with the whole movement. What is next on the chopping block? And I'll keep it short, I might promise. We've got the exclusion of people who are not all in with it. And as I stated, this best fits the people who are okay with people who are in the LGBT, but they disagree with being called a cis woman or chest birther or chest feeder. Or as I call it, xenomorph. And what has this action caused? Well, just more disagreement with the movement. To where people who can't even criticize the movement, which in the end has caused more division because extremes just take the extremes to another level. For example, Dylan Mulvaney with their whole days of girlhood, even though they quite literally have no idea as to what it means to be a girl. And this made a lot of women look sideways at the whole movement. But then I take this to the last thing of the exclusion of people who are quite literally included in the celebration, which, as I also stated, that includes people who are gay or lesbian or even bi, and this I really don't have to dive further into because it's just more of the same, where it causes nothing but division and more division over and over again. But this point was to be more of a hook. Because with this division has been what I call the separation of the movement. Because to me, it is no longer the LGBT+, plus, but rather just the T+. Because most that I hear from the latter three groups is that they don't claim the stuff happening nowadays. And along with the other three issues that I described here, it has caused this whole 
you're either all for me or not at all. And so, if I became a trans woman, then that means I am a woman, and you have to respect that or you're transphobic. And how is this a hook exactly? Well, this ties in with my greater point in this whole thing, because it matters a lot. A couple days ago, I made a video going over trust and how it interacts with someone offing themselves, and I more or less finished off that video by telling you all to stop lying. And this is where I mostly get the whole trust and offing yourself connection. If you are a trans woman, so not an actual woman, yet want everyone around you to call yourself something that you just are not, then everyone around you is lying to you. And more importantly, you're just lying to yourself. This is why I believe that the statistic for people who identify with the trans movement is linked with offing themselves being at such a high statistic. It is not because people aren't affirming them of being a woman, but rather because they're lying to themselves and everyone else around them is also lying to them. And so, what is my remedy for this? Just call that trans woman a man? No, that is actually not my remedy for this, because they don't think that they're a man, but they're also just not a woman. I would bet you anything that if the whole trans movement just called themselves what they are, be it a trans man or trans woman, I would bet you that if they all called themselves what they are, then that rate for offing themselves would go down. It is not going to go down completely because, you know, there are other issues at play, but I would bet you anything that if trans women called themselves trans women and not women, but trans women, then the rate for offing themselves would go down. And if you are trans and still listening to this, then think of it like this. For example, you're a trans woman. If you tell someone that you're a woman, you cannot expect other people to lie to you just because it makes you feel good. But if you were to tell that same person, uh, let's for example sake say that they called you a man, but then you rebuttal with, hey, I'm a trans woman, I would be happy if you called me X, Y pronouns, then I would fight alongside you in calling that person transphobic if they still decided to call you man or sir. Because now they're not respecting you just for the sake of not respecting you. You're not lying to yourself, calling yourself a trans woman, and yet that person felt the need to disrespect you for no reason. Now I would fight your corner because they're just being an asshole for no other reason than to just be an asshole. I just ask that everybody stop lying to themselves and stop asking people to lie to you. And as I said, I would bet you anything that if people stopped lying, then the rate for people offing themselves would go down a large chunk. Bet you anything. But I think that that is just about it for what I had on today's agenda. And if you enjoyed watching this, then hit that like button. And while you're at it, if you appreciate listening to North American type news, that would be Canadian and US news, then hit that subscribe button to hear daily news coverage. But aside from that, I hope to see you t in tomorrow's video. Uh, no, it's not tomorrow. Sorry, I'm having a stroke here. I meant next day's a video because I'm not posting a video tomorrow because I'm gonna be busy with uh gonna be busy with that whole entire experiment thing which once again mark the date because I bet you I bet you I bet you anything I would actually bet you more for this than I would about the whole entire uh statistic for people offing themselves that people started not lying to themselves I bet you anything that this experiment is going to explode in my face I bet you anything. However, once again, contingency plans are already here. Just still going to bet that it's going to explode in my face. However, I hope to see you in the next vi video, which will be the next day. But until then, 
have a good one.